So let's start with some quick introductions. My name is Adam Kleinberg. Um, I run an agency called Traction in San Francisco. Um, you know, our, our kind of focus is to leverage both psychology and technology to come together to solve problems for our clients' businesses. My name is Amy Love. I'm the uh, acting CMO and vice president for brand and communications for NetApp. And one of the biggest challenges we have is how you can demonstrate that social media makes sense uh, within a B2B space. My name is Yasha Kekis Wolf. I'm the chief marketing officer at a company called Mindjet. Um, with a couple of million plus paid customers, we actually have a pretty unique attribute, and that's that greater than half of our business is driven through word of mouth. So for us, the community, and specifically our branded community, is a really critical component for our growth moving forward. Evan Grossman, Vice President, Product Strategy for Athena Health. We're a service to medical practices. We're actually wanted to get satisfaction users on the panel. We use it as a way for product ideation. We have over a thousand doctors that are sharing ideas with each other and with us. I'm Chris Carpe, I'm Vice President of Social Business Strategy at Ants iView. Well great. So we're gonna put up the slide real quick on the six key points. So I'm going to start with Chris, if you can kind of tell me, which one resonated with you? Which one makes sense uh, the most out there? So number six, um, around uh, customer advocacy, just because that's the, the world that I'm living in. Cash rewards and the rewards of stuff aren't great motivators, but there are other things. There are things like access. There's the ability to connect up with others who are like them. There's the ability to get earlier insight than peers and get some sort of geek cred. Amy, what do you think? Sure, from a business to business perspective, it really comes down to us for being number three and number five. But our customers clearly like to draw a distinction usually between their pure social oriented, uh, personal oriented social engagements and are looking to do the research on a company branded community. And the key to that is having the right content. Starting out, what metrics did you start with and, and how has it evolved over time since you guys are uh, in the field doing this? Uh, Amy? You know, clearly from our metric standpoint, we're tracking the number of active um, community uh, users. And from a B2B perspective, it really is about that engagement. Do you feel that they are actually having a conversation, doing the research, looking for the new content? Are you providing content that's helping them day in and day out do their job? And the way in which we can track that is the ongoing discussion and dialogue they're having in our branded site. So being a B2B, I think it's a little bit different. I have no idea what the actual number is. Is it hundreds of thousands or millions of looky-loos? People that actually come onto our branded community site and read the content and engage with it as a passive, but in order to comment on it, you actually have to register. You have to provide your name. And that's how, you know, in four years, we've exceeded the $100,000 purely registered, which I think is one of the biggest challenges to get people to give up their name and email address today. Right. Um, because there's just a lack of trust from that standpoint. So if we're already at 100,000 users, we're trying to figure out what is the right metric to extrapolate of what do we think then is the active engagement from a looky-loo perspective. And, and I don't think there's a clear way yet within the marketplace to know what that number is. The typical progression that I see, and this is true for MindJet, and we're not all the way to the point that we need to be, but I think this is true for most businesses, that you start with vanity metrics. Give me, give me a vanity metric. These are the it's likes. It's a like or a follow okay. or a, a retweet or, a, or whatever. I mean, there are things. Look at me, that, look at me, take a exactly. look. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So the, the vanity, they're oftentimes most useful in uh, growing some emotional awareness of the investments that you're making as a team within an organization, if you're the only team that's making that investment. The next step is into correlation. Um, so this is uh, effectively ratios. So if you understand the primary kind of funnel of your business, if for us as a business, our, our ratios are fairly simple. If we get new unique visitors onto our website, we know the general conversion rate into our trial process, we knew through that process. And so activities that have a correlational relationship. And then the next step there is causation. Uh, ultimately, you end up with a blend of all three, and that becomes the thing that you operationalize in your business. In traditional world, we as, as marketers were always, we were always the ones who were the instigators of the conversation. We were always pushing messages out and always doing things. And now we have the ability to instigate all of these types of, of interactions, everything from the, the customer support types of things, saying it was sad, to, um, <laughs> you know, to, to other types of things. All the piece parts are there. We as customers need to be putting more intention out, and we as marketers need to be listening and tying that into our internal processes a lot more aggressively. At the end of the day, it's detractors and it's promoters. Uh, certainly in this environment today where the consumer or the customer is so empowered and has such influence over the success of your brand or your product, it's critical that you make sure you have that right listing program that allows you to see the content that's being written. Uh, whether it be on your branded site or elsewhere, and that you are in a position to utilize the right bench level to support getting the right message out 
uh, and then getting the community to engage with it. I think one of the problems that marketers have is that they, they look, they say, okay, I'm gonna create this silo of, of social media. But social media is a lot of different things. It's customer care, it's marketing, it's socializing your products, it's public outreach, PR, uh, and at the core, it's strategy and insight, you know? It's one of many channels. I think we, this whole integrated marketing loop, I mean, social is one of the areas that's getting people's attention. This is a me-centric right. economy. Right. Um, and there's something we're writing that's similar to that. There, there are three rules that are happening. It's me-centric but connected. Mm -hmm. This is a very important fact. The second thing is it's governed by self-interest. As soon as I lose interest or context, don't talk to me. I'm tired of this. I don't know. Right. You're gone. Right? And it's a fleeting moment in there. And then the third piece that's important is it's monetized by engagement. And when you look at VRM and the intention economy, he's capturing all that. And it's pretty powerful. Even though the customer might not be God, you can fire your customer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's a way to get there. Well, round of applause. <laughs>